And what I'm going to focus on primarily is the six-point hydraulic level up system made by Lippert. It's on uh, most all the Alpines. A lot of the newer ones have the uh, equalizer hydraulic system, which uh, similar but different. Well, now that all the barking dogs have gone away, maybe I can do this. Uh. So, for the older Alpine like mine, 2014, I don't have the in command system, so I have the Lippert level up control. And everybody else's should look just like this one. And this is basically, you know, how you control your level up. From this panel, you can uh, do an auto level, you can manually raise and lower the legs. You can hitch and unhitch, and etc. So now I've moved to the front of the Alpine and opened up the front storage compartment. Showed you the uh, Lippert Level Up panel. That's just a control panel. All it does is interfaces, if you will, to the front forward control module. And this is the front forward control module. Basically, this is the brains of the entire Level Up system. Interfaces with the control panel and on the, some of the newer Alpines also with the in-command system display. And so basically when you press one of the buttons, uh, be it the auto level or be it the manual button, or uh, you want to raise or lower the front landing gear, etc., those signals from the touch panel on the side are routed through the forward control module and interpolated and then passed on to the appropriate subsystem. And everybody's going to say, well, what, what do you mean by subsystems? Okay, well, that's my big word for the various uh, subcomponents of the level up system itself or the, the entire hydraulic system. So what I've done is opened up the hydraulic bay door where we can see the hydraulic pump motor, the dual polarity solenoid, which all this does is tells the motor to run either clockwise or counterclockwise the hydraulic pump itself and up high in here where you see all of these orange lines going to this is the extend or pressure manifold this uh, uh, when the fluid flows through here and flows through one of these HIDAC valves and the lines it's going to extend either your front landing gear your mid and rear levelers or your hydraulic slides the other manifold is the return or retract side manifold and you can identify it very easily by looking at the black lines. The black lines indicate the return or retract side and the orange lines indicate the extend or pressure side. Also on the retract manifold you'll notice way up at the top you'll see a little blue looking device with a gold base on it or brass base and what that is is the pressure cutoff switch. Looking up on my particular Alpine, looking up at the extend manifold, you will notice that on the top of that manifold, you see some small cartridges. This is one here, there's another here, and then there's one more back here where my finger's pointing. So the first two are the mid and rear left and right uh, hydraulic levelers, uh, HIDAC valves, and the very last one to the right is the HIDAC valve that controls the movement of the hydraulic slides. Now, if you notice and pay attention, I did not say anything about front landing gear. There is no HIDAC valve on the manifold, on the extend manifold, for the front landing gear. Instead, we'll look down here at the front landing gear, and you'll notice that here is the HIDAC valve. The last two parts in the system that I didn't mention, common sense, this is the hydraulic reservoir, this is the fluid, and this is the DC battery source. Uh, 12 volts is what you need to run the system with. The converter output when you're plugged into shore power also provides 12 volts DC, but not enough uh, amperage to handle the initial peak startup load of this hydraulic pump. So. You've got to have batteries installed. In my case, these are two eight-year-old, going on nine-year-old GC2 batteries that are still doing quite well. So let's talk about fluid flow. And what I mean by that is the fluid has to flow somewhere to make something move or something happen. So in this case, we're gonna focus right at the pump itself. You'll see a black line and you'll see an orange line. We'll start with this orange line right here. 
And this orange line, as you see, runs right up here, bends around and runs directly right to the extend manifold. On the extend manifold are the three high deck valves that I mentioned before, which control the left and right side, mid and rear levelers, and also your hydraulic levelers. There is also one more uh, output, and this output line right here, where my finger is at, passes only through the internal insides of this manifold. So it, it's like a, uh, a router. I get old and get, uh, uh, senile i can't think of the right words but uh, you know it's kind of like one of them rotary things when you're you get on a road and there's several different ways uh, to get off well it's basically the same thing all this manifold is doing is directing the flow of the fluid to a given item based on what has opened to allow the fluid to flow so in this case we'll talk about front landing gear so the fluid is going to come from this pump from the extend or pressure side of the hydraulic pump and it's going to run up to the extend manifold and it's going to run directly over here and it's going to run directly down this line and this is the same line that I just showed you up above on this extend manifold and it routes directly to the passenger side front landing gear. This high deck valve has to open electrically when you press the button to manually extend or retract that front landing gear or during an auto level sequence, the auto, the front forward control module will send 12 volts and open this coil, which then opens the HIDAC valve itself to allow the fluid to flow. So this is the entire flow sequence of the hydraulic fluid from the pump up to this manifold, which does nothing more than route that pressure from this line right here coming directly from the pump and it comes and passes right out of that manifold right down to the front landing gear and right down to this top cap on the passenger side which has the high deck valve the other front landing gear does not have a high deck valve and there are only two lines going to it instead of the three that you see going to this one this third line right here routes back and up and over to the other front landing gear. So if I'm having a front landing gear problem, I need to focus on uh, what that issue is. In other words, if my front landing gear uh, won't move at all, uh, we've already verified, let's, uh, let's step back a step. Assume, I'm assuming we've already verified that the hydraulic pump is running and it's turning in the proper direction. We can hear it running and we want the front landing gear to raise so that we can hook our fifth wheel up to our truck but the levelers or the front excuse me the front landing gear are not extending and so we can't get our fifth wheel up to our truck. if this high deck valve does not electrically open when you press the button on that level up control panel to tell this valve to open then the hydraulic pump it's going to run and it's going to send pressure through that extend manifold and down to the line to the top cap on this passenger side uh, front landing gear. But since this valve has not electrically actuated and opened up inside the mechanical uh, valve to allow that fluid to flow, neither one of the front landing gear is going to raise nor, nor lower. So what I've probably said is as clear as mud, but it's the best uh, that I can do to, to try to describe, you know, how the front landing gear system works. It's very simple. You know, this valve has to open to let the fluid flow, either to extend or to retract. If that doesn't occur, then this pump can run all day and nothing is going to happen. If you're in a pinch and you can't get this valve, you know that this valve is not opening, then on the very front of this is a 5 seconds Allen head screw that you can open, turn it about a turn and a half or so, and then run that hydraulic pump if it'll run, and now this front landing gear will in fact move up and down. Once you've achieved the uh, desired operation, either hooking up or uh, leveling the Alpine, whatever you're doing, then of course close that uh, uh, manual override screw and in this video I won't talk about the hydraulic uh, 
slide operation, but uh, what I did want to focus on, since I'm just talking about the level up system, is uh, we'll focus on these two high deck valves up here. Okay, if you are trying to level the left or the right hand side of the fifth wheel and the mid and rear levelers are not extending, then either this high deck valve is an opening uh, or you have a line that's leaking and in such case if it's an external leak you'll see it or you have one of the two levelers either the mid or the rear on the side that's having the issue has an internal leak and it's bypassing the fluid two more items i wanted to mention that uh, i forgot to mention in the video that we was making here on the uh, front landing gear system on your Lippert hydraulic pump, you'll see two funny looking fittings. The purpose of these fittings, and if you notice, one is on the, the black line, which is your retract side, and one is on the orange line, which is your extend side. The purpose of these two fittings is to allow a technician that knows what he's doing and understands the system, it allows him to put two pressure gauges on there so that he can actually monitor and read the retract pressure and the extend pressure to determine if you are, number one, if the hydraulic pump is producing the correct uh, hydraulic pressure to allow the uh, front landing gear or mid and rear levelers or the uh, hydraulic slides to extend or retract. And uh, if, if they're not using these gauges to test your system if you're having an issue, then I really question if they understand what they're doing. Uh, you really should use a couple of hydraulic pressure gauges. The average RV owner is not gonna have those. I do have them, but I'm not your average RV owner. Another item I wanted to mention also, uh, and this is dealing with the electrical side of the hydraulic system, is located in your battery compartment. And this is, again, for the Lippert system only. You'll find a red cover, plastic cover. And what this is, is it contains an ATC style fuse. And this is the fuse and it's seven and a half amps. And you notice there's one single red wire. That single red wire is what sends 12 volts power up through the harness and over to the front forward compartment and over to that front forward remote sensor. Again, that is the brains of the entire system. So if your system is dead, nothing is happening, you might want to check, locate this fuse, find it on your Alpine. It's there somewhere. And uh, carry a spare ATC fuse in case that blows. Uh, I've never blown one in 10 years and probably about the only thing that's going to cause that to blow is uh, some sort of a direct uh, short.